Hello everyone and welcome to Book Invasion. I am Scott. How about no, Scott? Today we're going to be talking about Seven Blades in Black by Sam Sykes. Sam has also authored a quite a few other books such as the Bring Down Heaven series, the Aeon's Gate, um, Omnibus, the Affinity for Steel, um, and then the other series starts with City Stained Red, um, and so on. So this is not his first foray into the dark and brutal fantasy genre. Now Seven Blades in Black is quite an experience. It is such a great story. Um, it's a pretty thick book coming in at just over 600 pages. I had gotten an advanced copy of the audiobook. Thank you so much to Orbit. That was amazing. The audiobook is great. It's narrated beautifully. And it really kind of brings these characters to life. Goodbye. Sam Sykes returns with a new fantasy that introduces a un an unforgettable outcast magician caught between two warring empires. Among humans, none have power like mages. And among mages, none have will like Sal the Cacophony. Once revered, now vagrant, she walks the wasteland scarred by generations of magical warfare. The Scar, a land torn between powerful empires, is where rogue mages go to disappear. Disgraced soldiers go to die, and Sal went with a blade, a gun, and a list of names she intended to use both on. But vengeance is a flame swift extinguished, betrayed by those she trusted most. Her magic torn from her in the waiting execution, Sal the Cacophony has one last tale to tell before they take her head. All she has left is her name, her story, and the weapon she used to carve both. Vengeance is its own reward. So throughout this book, you're getting the story as of told by Sal the Cacophony herself, and she's being kind of interrogated by the Republic, and she's trapped and chained in, in a room, and the agent of the Republic is questioning her and asking her, what happens to my soldier, Kavrik? Kavrik was with you, we know that he was with you, tell me what happened and where is he? So it starts off with that. So we don't know a lot's going in. We kind of jump into it right away when Sal's being questioned. So we know that she's done something awful. We know that she's been captured. And, and why has she been captured if she's so powerful and mighty? You know, where did she screw up? So we get the story from Sal herself. And the book um, is written in more of a third-person view when it's the parts present day, essentially, when, they're, when she's kind of being interrogated. But then it's written from first-person view when Sal goes through and starts to tell her story about her travels and her um, list of names that she seeks vengeance for. So it's kind of a retelling similar to, um, you know, Name of the Wind and the King Killer Chronicles, where you're, you're getting stuck into a present-day situation, but you're then getting pieces of the mystery of how they got there from the main character themselves. So it's... There's a lot of things that we don't know, and there's always the plot devices that are, you know, why does she have these list of names? Who are these people to her? Um, how did she come to be in this situation? How did she get all of her power? Um, what are There's a certain name on the list that, that makes her uneasy. It, it, it's the one, you know, the one we shall not name that... Obviously they have a history of, and we don't really know that history going in, so there's a lot of things that we don't know, and the book does a great progression of kind of giving us pieces here and there, giving us these memories and these feelings from Sal about these names and the history. So it flows really well. It's not very choppy where you're like, you know, present day and then like a, a past situation and then it breaks that memento by going back to present day and something else happens. There's tension throughout, there's action throughout, and even when, and the way that Sam writes these characters is is amazing because they really come to life with Sal, with Tretta, the, the interrogator, even with the, the different villains that she has and the different types of mages that she comes across. They're all, you can tell they all have some type of internal conflict, and the way that that's brought out on these pages is incredible. And Sal is just the, 
the biggest pain in the ass type of person you would ever meet. Like, she's cocky, she's just relaxed, she's like the Han Solo um, of just like, you know, what are you going to do? Do you know who I am? I know who I am. And then she just goes up against the craziest odds, and be it skill, wits, luck, and, and other things, you know, she always comes out successful, but not unscathed. You know, Sam's not afraid to just beat the living daylights out of his characters, and he does. So it's not like they just wander out, like, oh, that was easy, and then explosions happen in the background while they walk away. Like, no. Sal comes out of some of these, you know, crawling and begging and passing out. Obviously, you, you know, you appreciate that as a reader because it makes it more realistic. You know, I don't read a, a huge, whole lot of fantasy books. I think the first time I read, like, a real fantasy book was Kings of the Wild, like, last year. And that's a great introduction, and this book is very similar to that in where you have kind of a history of these empires, but you don't really know why they're warring at first. It doesn't go deep into the politics of empires and republics and things like that. It just tells you where the different viewpoints and, and why they think that they have done wrong. It doesn't go into like a big tirade of historical things. It's just like, okay, we know why these people are fighting these people. We, we have the why. And that's really all we need to know. We don't need to go back to a huge historical tirade of what have you. So this book is definitely, it's definitely vulgar, it's definitely brutal, it's so smart alecky. Um, there were so many good lines in this, and there were so many good pieces and quotes throughout this book, and I had tried to bookmark a bunch on audio, it's pretty hard obviously, without like writing down the track times. So I'm, I'm really going to try to clip some into this video. That's insane. That's a cacophony. A cacophony! Tretta removed another weapon from the box, an old, if well tended to, blade wrapped in warm leather. She slid it halfway out, inspected it. What manner of odious title does this weapon possess, then? Sal shrugged. I don't know. Jeff? What? It's just a sword. Sal leaned back in a chair. Not even my best one. I had to dig this out of my dresser. She approached with a pair of glasses in her hand, passed me one. I don't typically have calls to drink. And you don't typically have calls to live, I replied, taking the glass. I took a sip. My cheeks bulged with a taste of sweet tang as I looked down at the dark liquid within. I swallowed. What kind of whiskey is this? She stared at me, blinked. It's wine. Wine? I paused, swirled my glass, sniffed. So, do I just look like I've given up on life, or was that an educated guess on your part? I figure he's deep. I pointed towards the towers. He's a grass mage, so he'll hide with things he can levitate. I bet you'd pull down those towers on any mob that came looking for him. That's the sort of effort he's probably not willing to spend on one person, though. I glanced back at her. That makes sense, right? My mount glanced back at me. If she saw a flaw in my theory... She didn't say anything, which made sense, with her being a giant fucking bird and all. Sam Sykes' writing, I think, has definitely grown. He says that most of his inspiration for, like, the villains and their powers came from Dungeons and Dragons spells, so there's a deep kind of fantasy um, foundation built on D&D, which obviously you can find anywhere. But he said specifically, like, the mages and the different types of villains, because each villain has a, a certain power one can create, um, gates that can you can create portals. Um, one has spikes coming out of their skin. The other one can, um, I think, it's more of like a, a berserker. Things like that. It's paying homage to fantasy everywhere, you gotta you throw some of that in. And there's a uh, there's also a character in the book who is a giant bird named Congeniality, who Sal uses as her transportation to get <laughs> kind of from one place to another. And the bird, the bird has its own kind of personality, which is, which is great. And that's maybe not to Final Fantasy and the Chocobos or, or whatever they're called. Um, you know, a love letter to them, which was hilarious. And, and you, you learn to love um, congeniality and her temperaments. And now there also is a female-female a kind of little bit of a romantic element to this, where... 
it's Sal and Liette's the Freemaker. She's kind of the tinkerer, um, the alchemist kind of thing where she can kind of just make and deconstruct and reconstruct um, things very quickly. And so her and Sal kind of have a history of, of her coming to her for help and going off to battle. They don't know if they're going to see each other again. They don't know if Sal's going to die because she gets herself into all kinds of situations. And she's definitely made a name for herself. So there's, so there's a bit of an element kind of, of, of what are you fighting for. It, it, it provides you more motivation to Sal's adventures. But she's all, Sal is also being selfish in her own rights on doing this whole story is that she's seeking vengeance just for herself. So it's more of a deep kind of personal struggle tale, and I, and I know Sam Sykes had mentioned that when you write characters, it, it, the best thing to do is kind of give them an internal struggle that's the most kind of relatable to to people, the one that, that you think everyone can relate to. And, and Sal's inner struggle is, do I do this this thing that I've always wanted to do for my own gratification and just you know, always be out there and fighting, even though I think, even though I know it may cost me my life, or, you know, the person that I've had feelings for for such a long time supports me and kind of knows me enough to not stop me, but also I kind of want to just ensure my own safety and be with this person, you know, how do I, how do those two things pull you apart, like, mentally and... You know, do you just go out there and just keep fighting just to get your mind off of it? But then once the fighting stops, what's left? You know, what? who are you and what have you done? And what is left between your relationship with the other person? And is it worth it? So I think that was really kind of a good underlying tone. But the rest of the book is very quick-witted, smart-ass, lots of swearing, which I love. And it was just so action-packed and amazing. And I loved it. So if you're a fan of, of books like King Killer Chronicles meets Kings of the Wild, um, definitely check out Seven Blades in Black and check out Sam's other writing. He also made a little chart that I may show you on where to start with Sam Sykes' other stories. Um, but, I'll, but I would recommend you check out Seven Blades in Black. Um, he said in a recent like Reddit interview that that's what he thinks his best work is. So it just came out this month, a few days ago actually, so I would check it out as soon as possible. It was amazing. The cover art is great by Jeremy Wilson. You can I'll show some of his other cover artwork, which is also amazing. So Seven Blades in Black, I thought it was awesome. I think you will too. Um, thanks for watching. Goodbye.